With that, everybody, let's get down to business and wheels. Yes, they are, unfortunately. Let's get down to business. Season three with our New York Islander. And if I'm not mistaken, past me was a smartman instead of a dummy for once. And actually set up everything the way it needed to be set up. Am I right about that? Was past me a smartman? Coaching's good. Good. Everything looks good. I think I was a smartman. I think we did it. This is the roster. Oh my god, I forgot how bad it is. This is the roster for season three for your New York Islanders. Taylor Pyatt, Tim Connolly, and JP Dumont as the top line. Second line is Richard Park, Andy McDonald, and Pierre Danier. Third line, John Sim, Essa Pernes, and Yaroslav Bednar. And a fourth line of Steve Webb, Jason Krogan, and Matthew Darsh. The defense, Brian Campbell and Zidane Chara. So it's a little bit better. Uh, Stefan Robida and Eric Brewer. Mike Van Ryn with Matthew Biron. So the defense is looking okay. Goaltenders, Roberto Luongo and Nicholas Backstrom. Healthy scratches, Eric Bolton, Ray Schultz, and Corey Hirsch. Would it be better to call up Peter and Zetterberg for the third line? No, because they're both listed as depth forwards, and I'm going to leave them there and let them tear the AHL asunder. Uh, they are also with Redeem Verbata on the top line for the Chicago Wolves. Second line is Trent Hunter, Nico Kapanen, and Pascal Dupuis. You got Jeff Hogan, Chris Kelly, and Chris Neal. And a fourth line of Matthias Weinhandel, Uri Kolnick, and Christian Berglund. The defense, Branislav Meze and Jeff Jilson. Gerald D -D 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 Didick. I know it's not Didick, but Didick. Uh, and Dimitri Kalinin, Jeff Finger with Bob I'll bring the Beers. Shout out to Bob Beers. Goaltenders Rick DiPietro and Tim Thomas, who was never going to be the Tim Thomas that he ended up becoming in real life. So there's that. Uh, AHL-wise, we, we got some pieces. NHL-wise, we, we got some pieces. But we are still very much determined to tank. And here is why. In the upcoming draft, aside from computer-generated dudes such as Nico Marjamaki and Stefan Lalonde, you have Rick Nash. And some guy named Duncan Keith. Oh. Then you also have another generated dude, Fred Iliakis and Louis Paré. But then, back to real dudes, Jay Baumeister, Pierre-Marc Bouchard, Chris Higgins, Yanni Pitkin, and Alex Semin. His jersey's on the wall. Unbelievable. Alexander Steen, Ryan Whitney. You got Joffrey Lupel, Trevor Daly, Valtteri, Filpula, James Wisniewski. You got Dennis Weidman, Franz Nielsen, and numerous, numerous others. Of course, with some generated dude mixed name. Paul Rangers in this draft. Billy Lano, Billy Bano is in this draft. Peter Pruka. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Anyway. We are very much aiming for Rick Nash. We'll see if it happens. Confirm Tukey has semen on his wall. I see what you've done there. I see what you've done. With that, I do need to see how many times I can hit the wrong button. I do. Up. Oh, yep. Yep. Okay. There we go. Yep. Yep, I want to see what our ratings are for the year. I want to see. 79, 88, 85. At least Chara's fucking massive. <laughs> that works. Yeah, we're uh, we're a pretty bad team. I don't remember Rick Nash being 65. Yeah, players players can grow before they're drafted. So that that is a thing. It can just randomly happen. Uh, I don't think I set up the trade block, but hopefully that's okay. Uh, so far, so good in the losing and tying department, and Zidane Chara gets hurt. 
which uh, typically wouldn't be ideal, but right about now, hey, it's not too bad. Big shot to Carnage, by the way. What's going on? And let, ooh, Dimitri Escavich for a third and a fourth. That was actually a half decent deal, but I don't really have space for anybody like that. So, surplus, we will open this up in full. I'm going to get a lot of the same offers of, hey, trade away this dude for no reason, which I really don't want to do. Actually, I need to fully have this here. We'll only have that open. I am going to be very specific here. Very, very specific. So, with the forwards, we want dudes who are 23 or younger, who are medium four star. I meant to put the overall as well. And we want dudes who are at least a 70. I want good prospects if any trades are to be made. Again, we got to do this for all three spots. Not that we need goaltending, but we'll still do it for our goalies. We will, we will. Back up to a 70. So I guess this was the one thing that I forgot to do, that past me forgot to do. But all things considered, you did well past me. You did well. Do you have any good players to trade? Potentially, yes. I mean, I have good players. It's just whether or not I want to trade them. They're all prospects. <laughs> prospects can be good players, right? Uh, so again, I am not going to want any picks other than first rounders. Otherwise, I'm going to get bombarded with deals for seconds and thirds. You give me first round picks or good prospects or you leave me the hell alone. As we just won back-to-back -back games. It's not ideal. Let's get uh, Ray Schultz off of the top defense pairing. My God. Can we stop winning games, please? Especially, uh, we just beat the Devils three times in a row. How the hell are we beating the Devils three times in a row? They still have Brodeur. I think that was now that I think about the last thing I was going to do was take a look around the league and see how things have changed. We didn't do that, but that's okay. Can we can we stop winning? I'm I'm so confused. Apparently nothing happened against Detroit. It's just giving us no result whatsoever. <laughs> December 1st, we are in second place in our division. I right, LFC, it's it's uh, Chris Kelleher, not uh, one Quivine Kelleher. Hockey kid, what's up? I had a I had a really solid Christmas. I had a solid, solid Christmas. So many people are hurt. Jesus Christ. Superstar. JP Dumont being hurt is not great. Uh, because I know he's a scratch, let's call up Jeff Taff. The Laffy Taffy. As they call him. We'll get him in there at forward. Walk through this fucking grass. Shout to Moritz Kozloff no more. I'm from Flute Stream. Well, welcome. Can you tell I am befuddled by your username? Absolutely befuddled. <laughs> welcome in. Welcome in. My goodness. Hey, Richard Park, Southie. Was he even hurt in the first place? No, he wasn't. Moritz is fine. Uh, I'm glad you said that because that's what it was going to be. <laughs> Whether you said otherwise. <laughs> So there you go. Oh my god. Oh, everyone's back. The second I fix the lineup, everyone comes back from injury. Except for Matthew Darsh. And there's Matthew Darsh. Goodness. Goodness. Alright. Send down Jeff Taff. Send down Jeff Taff. What else am I doing? What else am I doing? Eric Bolton. We had so many people get hurt at the exact same time. 
It caused a lot of problems. Eric Brewer's healthy. Matthew Darsh is healthy as we beat the... Th Can we please stop winning games? 15-16-5-0 as of January 1st. Currently in third in the Atlantic Division. Thankfully, if the season ended today, we wouldn't make the playoffs. But the fact that we are closer to the middle of the board than the bottom, Detroit is at the bottom, which is shocking. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where the hell even were we? We were right there in 18th. Okay. Ugh. This is bad. I don't know how we're this good. I do not know how. J.P. Dumont and Tim Connolly, the Buffalo dynamic duo. Richard Park has 28 points. McDonald, 27. It really drops off from there. We have four good players, and the four of them are doing incredibly well. Brian Campbell's got 18 points. I mean, we have defenders that can put up points, too. Goaltending hasn't been great. Luongo's got a 909, Backstrom an 897. I I don't know how we're this good. I really don't. Pavel Bure leading the way. 55 points in the league alongside teammate Victor Kozlov. It's crazy. Leafs are on a tear right now, too. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. If we keep doing well, I am going to have to get rid of people. Uh, Secretary, I think the scoring was still kept to medium, medium. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, stop winning games. Stop. Stop winning games. Dude, Rick Nash. I didn't get Marion Gabarik. And I'm not going to get Rick Nash. And I like Rick Nash more than Marion Gabarik. Rick Nash is one of my favorite players ever. Skipped over to the... Dude, oh, my God. God, hold on, hold on. The AHL team is 32 8. Oh, my Michigan. <laughs> what record's more shocking? Our record in a positive way or their record in a negative way? Jesus Christ. Michigan, are you okay? Is there something in the water? Don't answer that. They got Chris Colanos. Oh. Oh, now it makes sense. Shout out to Nick Roberts. By the way, thank you for the 32 months, Don Sweeney, number one. I forget whose AHL team is Michigan's. Looks like Dallas. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Dallas is going to have... Oh, yeah. Guys still got braces. Fair enough. Hey, get your teeth fixed. You know what it is for this? Um, Dallas must have like 32 players signed. Atlanta has 37. 33. I was close. Dallas... Dude. EA. 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 There isn't a sound. I gotta mute the music. People on YouTube are watching the vodka in here. Yeah. There is no salary cap. So how the fuck is a team not smart enough to sign a roster of players? How? This is noted shill, Dookie24. Asking how, how, with no salary cap, do they not sign anybody? Fuck, look at, look at the fucking free agent, all of them asking league men, not as if it fucking matters, but how are they not smart enough? How?
Holy shit. Okay. And that's the thing. They're not the only team either. They're not. They're not the only team, right? We saw a couple of other teams that were lower. Let's see. Who else is below 40? 38 for New Jersey, 38 for Montreal, 39 for Florida, 38, 33, 38, 39, 37 for Atlanta. Ugh, it's just, it's illogical, it's nonsensical, and I hate it. And I hate it. We march, we move. Good Lord, EA. Good Lord. Yeah, Snipe, you would think the amount of players that you made would have stopped it, but apparently not. Um, that's actually very concerning for my custom roster process because I am going to be fucking livid if I see that happen. I didn't really see it happen to Vassy's rosters, at least not to that level. But I don't know what the difference would be that would cause potential issues. So, Oh, boy. 38, 8, and 6 for Chicago. Hello. The Islanders at 21, 23, and 6. We're still way too good. We are still way too good. Oh, compared to what we should be. Mm. There's really nothing I can do to make this team worse. We just are what we are. If we end up making the playoffs, that'll be devastating, but it be what it do, it do what it be. Time to trade Connolly. Honestly, I mean, Connolly and Dumont have been doing far too much. Never underestimate the powers of Taylor Pyatt. Hmm. Do I even... I guess I do have Andy McDonald on this team. Jeff Jolson got hurt, too. Criminy. Oh, you know, yeah, Andy McDonald, the center. I was thinking Andrew McDonald, the defenseman, who then went to Philadelphia. That makes sense. That mistake now makes sense. I can't believe how bad Dallas's roster was. Oh, my God. Uh, Bob Beers is healthy, but we're not too worried. Jeff Jilson's healthy. I'm not too worried. It is a day before the deadline, and we are in second place in our division. Despite that, we're still only ninth in the conference. We might actually make the playoffs. And it's probably too late to tank. JP Dumont is over a point per game. Rowan, what's up, by the way? Connolly and Dumont are leading this team. Cannon, what's up? You didn't miss a few days because I took a few days off. So you haven't missed a thing. Well, welcome. Welcome back. So Dumont's only 23. I can't get rid of him. Connolly is only 20. It's Pietro here. He's on our AHL team. Where he has a 9-10 save percentage in 45 games. This is bad news, man. I can't bench people because it will screw with the uh, development we go to the deadline. Christ, do we trade for Rod Brindamore? <laughs> hey, Jay, what's up? Sergey Joel talks out there. Mark Messier, Leafs legend. Yannick Perot, Al McInnes, Glenn Murray. Do love me some Glenn Murray. Um, let's, uh, let's see what happens at this particular deadline because, oh my God, what a situation we are currently in. In terms of goaltenders, we know that Lundqvist is getting better. I highly doubt I can get anything for Tim Thomas. Mike Smith and company. I mean, yeah, there's really not much we need to do. Is this really 2025? No. 
No, it is not. But you can't set the year starting date backwards. All right, there's nothing we can do there trade-wise. Defensively, it's just a bunch of dudes I don't want to get rid of. I Dumont for Bada. I mean, we could move on from Richard Park, who does have 45 points this season. He has been awesome. Can I get anything for Richard Park? Chris Kalanos. Mm. It would make the team worse. Kalanos is a 20-year-old, uh, 74 overall, power forward. Park is 80 overall. Hate to say it, but I mean, it would make sense to get rid of Park, get a younger prospect. who's about as good medium nine and high bottom six typically equal out. It would save Kalanos from that horrible K-Wings team. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. It's Parks last year on his deal anyway. He's about to ask for a shitload of money because he's had a great year. Not that it matters. There's no salary cap. Um, I'm going to take that deal, though. Richard Park for Chris Kalanos. I'm going to try to make the team worse if I can without getting rid of anybody who's, like, crucial long-term. Rabada, Hunter, I mean, Merrick Svatos is in the system. Calgary made a deal. Park South Korea. Indeed. Dupuy, Renee Bork. There's really nobody else to get rid of outside of Park. There's really nobody else. I mean, Jason Krogh. Only has 16 points this year. I am going to have to see what J.P. Dumont would fetch us, but... Nobody wants him. Apparently. Leafs just traded Mark Messier to Edmonton. That's amazing. Tim Connolly. No available trades. There's really not much I can do here. Uh it like Riku Hall or whatever for Jason Krogh. It is Riku Hall, uh, who's very ungood, but technically is worse than Jason Krog. And by the time he hits Krog age, they'll probably be the same overall. I'll do it. We'll send Jason Krog to Colorado for Riku Hall. I'm just trying to get rid of anybody, even a bit part, without sacrificing the long-term future of the team. If I can make us worse in the interim, get a lottery pick, we might be okay. Problem is, not a lot of our players are desirable. If we were to trade Andy McDonald, yeah, nothing. Open block looking too. John Sim, nothing. Central 24 worth buying if it's on the. If you can get it for like 20 bucks, go ahead. Any more than that? Hey, I might want to wait until it's 20. Didic beers roll off. Again, we're not trading Chara. We're not trading Brewer. I think we're pretty much done. I think we're pretty much done. Open block. Didn't even find somebody for Chara. Let's take a look around the league. See if there's any good prospects there. Cynical, that sounds about right. Hello, by the way. Are there any good prospects on the block? It's Kim Janssen. Not quite a prospect, just a good player. Same for White, not really a prospect at this point. Philly's trying to move on from one Colby Armstrong. Fourth round pick for Colby Armstrong. You got a deal. I mean, that's a no-brainer. That is a no-brainer. Oh, I know Alex Dagg was there. Uh, Dustin Penner. Yeah. Barrett Jackman. Third round pick for Barrett Jackman. I'll, I'll do that too. <laughs> Why not? It's worth it. Uh, Neil Zeckman's 25, so not really the prospect that we're looking for. Same for Brendan Morrison. Uh, Steven Weiss. Clean and Robida. Uh, 
Uh, Di Pietro and Robida. Ah, there's no real combination there that I like. Didn't bear Jackman when the Calder. He sure did. Don't want Alex Burrows. Don't want Steven Ryan Precht. Well, we've been able to get a couple of prospects for absolutely nothing so far, which is pretty nice. Samuelson's not really a prospect, though. At 26. Peter Yannick's not really there. Rich Peverly? Fourth round pick for Rich Beverly. I don't know how the hell high nine equates to a fourth round pick, but I will gladly take advantage. I need all the help I can get right now. I do believe we are out of prospects, though. And indeed we are. What would Alexander Dag cost us in? There's no deal there. Um... I feel like that's our deadline. I'm certainly not going to trade to get someone like freaking Rod Brindamore at this point. It just wouldn't make sense. So we'll bail out. That is our deadline. I don't know what to make of the season. We're so much better than we should be. Yannick Perot for Al McKinnis in a sixth. Jamal Mayers is on waivers. Just skip Fedorov. It wasn't Sergey. Um, we'll take Jamal Mayers on waivers. That's fine. No reason not to. Obviously, we're going to have to rework our team, but let's take a look at some of the other trades. Todd White get moved. Dag ended up in Buffalo. Philippe Boucher in Washington. Manny Fernandez in Chicago. Hoagland and Barnaby to St. Louis. Johansson ended up getting moved. Johnson, Johansson, whatever. It's probably Johnson. Any other big trades? Dimitri Yuskevich. So the Leafs were very active. Very, very active at this deadline. Brendan Morrison ended up in Calgary. As well as Steve Correa. Here's Slager on the move. Of course, we got Barrick Jackman, Colby Armstrong. It's interesting what was called, um, it's interesting what was called a blockbuster and what wasn't. Jason Pominville, Marcel Gotch in Carolina, again, Messier went back to Edmonton. Danny Breer gets dealt to Washington. How variable are the potentials in this? Could someone make Dig a superstar if they're lucky? It is theoretically possible, especially with the morale on. Like, if you were to put him modern-day equivalents with, like, McKinnon and Ranton, and all three of them are over point per game, his overall would go up. So theoretically possible. Let's take a look at what this team is going to be now that we are beyond the deadline. Goaltending is still good. Defense still looking okay. 10, 11, 12 with Kalanos. This is fine there. And call up two dudes from the AHL. One will be Jamal Mayers, which kind of defeats the purpose of trading who we traded away. The other will be Jeff Hogan, brother. Um, again, we don't want to make the team too good. So let's go best lines. We get Taylor Pyatt back up there. Do I have another center? I do not. Shiz. Well, that didn't work out. Uh, Jeff Hogan, we're going to send you down. I need somebody who can play center. Kapanen's still 23. Uh, Rico Hall was only 21. Jeff Taff. Come on down. Why not? You're terrible. Let's have Jeff Taff slot in here out of pure desperation. God, this team is bad. Oh, yeah, it isn't all Sabres first line, indeed. Second line, Jamal Mayers. Who says no? 
The defense, Char, Roby Dot, Campbell, Biron. We have had Char with Campbell for most of the season, but we'll just run best lines for now. It's fine. So I, I believe that technically, technically, we are worse. You know, how much that actually means? Debatable. But we are technically worse. So that's good. I've been following the World Juniors uh, slightly for day one, but I did not see everything. There we go. All right. Well, let's find out if this team is going to absolutely screw us over by making the playoffs. Even though we have weakened them heading in or heading out of the deadline and into the final month and a half of the season. <sighs> well, Andy McDonald immediately got hurt. Your AHL team should be <laughs> your NHL team. Correct. Taylor Pyatt gets hurt. We've only won one game post-deadline, which is good. Well, Junior's being at Sweden and being done before I completely wake up, maybe not give a cry. That's, you know, fair enough. Fair enough. It's supposed to be the 03 draft. You're correct. Top liner, Eric Bolton. Let's go. Did Chris Neal miss any game time with that injury? He did not. He did not. All right, we've won two of our last three. Okay, lost to Florida. Jamal Mayers, he's going to be done for the season with concussion issues. All right. Handful of games to go. Currently on 72 points. The Devils have tiebreaker. We might actually still make the playoffs. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Oh, what are we going to do? I need to call up another forward. Because of Jamal being hurt. So congrats to Jeff Hogan, brother. <laughs> I'm going to try to grab Bergeron. I presume he has like a low elite potential. Oh, it's the O2 draft here, not the O3. Never mind. There you go. I misspoke. Duh. Yeah, Nash being the O2. Well, in, in the ages. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm distraught. I'm an unreliable narrator at the moment because I'm in physical pain. Physical pain from how this season has gone. And the fun part is it's only going to get worse once we fuck around and make the playoffs. Isn't that fun? That's what I thought. You're right. The answer is no. It's not fun at all. This team shouldn't be capable of making the playoffs. And yes, we have Heatley in the AHL still. He and Zetterberg both. Carolina. We lost. Thank God. Zetterberg's out for a little bit. Taylor Pyatt's healthy. Which is good news for us. Or bad news. Montreal. Nico Kapanen broke his nose again. We lose to Montreal. Thank God. We have two games left. We're currently not in a playoff spot. Will it stay that way? Zetterberg has 100 points in the AHL season. Jesus Christ. Washington. We lose. I think we're going to miss. Yes. Oh, I think we're going to miss out. I think we're going to miss out. It won't be a mate. Yes. Oh, thank God. We have missed the playoffs. Oh, thank God. By a lot, too. 11 points out. Ooh. Thank God. That's right. Because, again, I knew it wasn't the same structure, but I didn't know, you know, as it is now with, like, a certain amount of teams having to make it. I knew it was one through eight. I just didn't know how the other divisions were looking. Whew, thank God. So now we can be somewhat happy because, hey, some of our players had very good performances this year, and we still missed the playoffs. Having a higher, you know, set of odds in the lottery doesn't mean a goddamn thing. 
as we've seen. So, Out of the Atlantic Division, only the Flyers made the playoffs. Out of the Northeast, you had Buffalo, Ottawa, Toronto, and Montreal. And in the Southeast, the uh, Florida Panthers, Washington Capitals, and the Atlanta Thrashers have made the playoffs. In the West, we start off in the Central Division. St. Louis and Nashville heading to the postseason. In the Northwest, Colorado, Edmonton, and Calgary. And the Pacific is San Jose, Anaheim, and Dallas. There you go. The Florida Panthers win the President's Trophy. And we finish 22nd out of 28 teams. We're still, you know, we're, we're within striking distance here. It's not a complete disaster like it looked like it was going to be. Thank God. J.P. Dumont had a hell of a season. Finished just under a point per game. Tim Connolly, 75 and a full 82. Drops off heavily from there. Andy McDonald really suffered in the back half of the season without Park. Pierre Danier, 33 points. Pyatt on the first line had just 28, but he had 20 goals. Did 20-year-old Taylor Pyatt. And then obviously the scoring drops a bit from there. But, uh, you know, it all worked out for us. Oh, man, Stano Char, 75 games, 56 points. You had Brian Campbell on 41. Honestly, outside of Biron, all of our defensemen were capable of putting up points. Pretty good. Uh, goaltenders, 902 for Luongo and a 918 for Nick Backstrom by the end of the season. Poor Luongo. His, his career numbers are always going to look like shit because he's played behind this team. <laughs> Throughout the... Oh, my sweet criminy. With 130 points, 63 goals, Paul Correa wins the scoring title. Nine points ahead of Florida's Pavel Bure on 72 goals. And also over 100 points, you had Sakic, Solani, Victor Kozlov, Pierre Turgeon, Doug Gilmore, and Yuramir... Yager. Top goal scorers, Bure, Korea, Yager, Sakic, and Owen Nolan to hit 50. Where did Naslin sign, by the way? He went back to Vancouver. Fair enough. Fair enough. Defensively, 79 points for Phil Housley, who's ancient, uh, as is Al McKinnis on 78. You got Nick Lidstrom, Brian Leach, and Oleg Tavardovsky. Top goal scorer, 33 for Al McInnes. Jesus Christ. Blake up there, Brian Leach, Callie Johansson, and Phil Housley. For the goalies, the winningest, Florida's Trevor Kidd. The shutout leader with seven, Evgeny Nabokov. In San Jose. Among us goalies who started over half the season's worth of games, the Bokoff led the way in terms of save percentage. Brador, though, played 71 games, which is incredible. And then for the rookies, Brendan Canzanello, a generated dude who went to Atlanta, is going to win it. In terms of the real rookie of the year, though, Brian Campbell, it would actually end up going to Scott Hartnell uh, because of that plus 20. So, yeah. Scotty Hartnell deserves to win it, but he will not, because that's not how the game works. So the good news. We have missed the playoffs. The worst news. We get to uh, get ready to watch a team that won 61 games lose in the first round again, because that's just what the Chicago Wolves do.